Sunrise in Fox Creek marks the start of a day for most, but it is the end of a long night for operators coming off graveyards at the Kebab South gas plants. The Hudson's Bay plants are located about five miles southwest of town. The road is smooth and well oiled, and it's a rather peaceful drive through the green forest. On the way is one of the many wells, which supply raw gas to the plant. The gas is produced from its reservoir, two miles underground, and transported through pipelines buried alongside the road. At the main plant entrance, an electric new latched gate prevents access by unauthorized persons. The Kebab South complex is actually two separate plants built side by side. Plant number one, and to the north of it, an almost identical plant number two. Plant 2 was constructed later when the gas field was proven to be much larger than originally anticipated. The pipelines gathering raw gas for the plant converge at the inlet header. Remotely controlled safety valves can block the flow of gas to the plant in the event of a fire or other emergency. The incoming raw gas first enters the inlet separator where the liquid hydrocarbons and water are separated from the hydrocarbon vapors. The vapors, or gas, are then sweetened in the four green amine contactor towers. The liquid hydrocarbons separated in the inlet area are purified by heating and distilling in the stabilizer to remove the dissolved vapors. Sweetened gas is further treated. Sweetened gas is further treated in the hydrocarbon recovery area to extract, extract propane and butane. These compounds are removed by chilling the gas stream to five below zero in order to condense them and dissolve them in an absorption oil. These fractionation towers separate the propane and butane and purify the absorption oil for recirculation. Twenty-two 1,000 horsepower compressors are used to compress most of the sweetened residue gas back into the underground reservoir to increase recovery of raw gas. This is a bird's eye view of the complex from halfway up the plant one incinerator stack. On the western horizon is Smoke Lake. There goes a number four operator who lets after some of the outlying portions of the plant such as the holding pond where waste water is stored prior to subsurface disposal, and the flare stack where waste gases are burned. The plants are a maze of piping and equipment 
which cost nearly $60 million to purchase and install. These are the cooling towers. In this area, the H2S is converted to pure sulfur by partially burning it and reacting the products in catalytic converters. The four sulfur trains each produce over 500 tons of sulfur per day. Over 97% of the incoming H2S is recovered as sulfur. The remaining sulfur-bearing gases are heated to 1,000 degrees and released from the top of this 230-foot Plant 2 incinerator stack. Molten sulfur can be observed draining from the condensers which follow each of the conversion stages. The liquid sulfur is pumped to the storage and rail loading area where over a million tons have been poured on the block to cool and solidify. Behind the block is the sulfur slate pile. The sulfur slating operation consists of pouring the molten sulfur onto moving belts in a bath of cool water. The sulfur then solidifies and breaks into slate-like pieces as it falls off the ends of the belt. The slated sulfur is transported up moving belts to the top of the slate pile. Underneath the slate pile is another conveyor system to bring the sulfur out of the pile over a set of weighing scales and load it into railway hopper cars. Sulfur also leaves the plant in molten form in tanker trucks. Still another method of shipment is in molten sulfur rail cars. Propane and butane also leave the plant site in railway tank cars. Products from the K-Bob complex can fill a 30-car train each day. Operations are controlled from a control room in each plant. The control panel consists of a simplified flow diagram of the plant with recorders and controls necessary to monitor and adjust the operation located below. The wells in the field are controlled by a computer with a teletype unit. The various gas and liquid flows in the plant are measured on charts like these. Thirteen operators man the plant at all times under the direction of the shift foreman. In the plant office, a staff of analysts and engineers handle the paperwork associated with the operation. The discovery of oil and gas reserves led to the development of the new town of Fox Creek. It is a new town indeed, with construction and improvements still underway. New businesses, such as these two motels, are constantly appearing. This is the town square, the center of retail activity. The Fox Creek School teaches almost 400 children from kindergarten right through to grade 12. Even the playground is still under construction.
After several years of bare dirt, grass has finally appeared on the school ground yard. Sixth Avenue is an example of one of the many modern residential streets. Centurion Court is an apartment development constructed and leased back to the oil companies to house single employees. Recreation facilities include a fast ballpark, a new arena with artificial ice, a two-sheet curling rink, also with artificial ice, and a small community hall. A scout hall and a picnic park are also nearby. The first fairway of the new golf course looks inviting. As does the ninth green. Just five miles from town is Isaac and Lake Campground. The water is not good for swimming, but the beach and lake are well used for sunbathing, boating, and fishing during the summer months. Wildlife abounds in the area, such as these two deer standing by the road on the first day of hunting season. Sunset now ends a brief day at K-Bob. <laughs>